you are the first artist that we have used this place in four years. We were, we were you guys were scrubbing the dust off as I came in. It's uh, yeah. we've just been waiting for you. Like we've been just waiting for you to ask. We can't to come start again until Drew until Gregory. Drew gets Gregory here. gets here. This is the first person I feel like we should add like a champagne bottle yeah. to kind of christen this place. But right man. On. It is great to get you back here inside, dude. Yeah. How has the summer been going? The summer was awesome. It yeah. was crazy. A lot going on, obviously, with shows. We farm as well, so that's always double busy. And then uh, we threw a move in this summer as well. Why not? So we ended up, um, mom and dad found a place in town, and we actually moved out to the family farm. So two moves, kind of. But uh, So you yeah. live in your childhood house right now? I do, yeah. We, we lived in town until I was in grade 10, I guess. I had my license, but it was like, you know, Pop and Grandma's house. It was the farm, so we were always out there. And yeah, it's awesome. We got two little boys now, and just to have them out at a, a younger age is, uh, I think it's going to be great. It has been great so far. They were coming for grain truck rides and everything with me, and yeah, had a had a blast with those guys out there. So I would imagine you don't use your parents' old bedroom, though, like that door's always locked <laughs> we've nobody's we're allowed we're painting. in there we're doing painting <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make it our weird? own yeah, <laughs> yeah. <There's> all <laughs> <laughs> i would imagine that's kind of weird you know like yeah. carter sheets did the exact yeah. same thing in the captains right and that's exactly what he said <laughs> he's just like we had to bring a shaman in and like <laughs> grace this place with ash and sage and just try to like yeah. you know put away the memories we're in the process of that uh, <laughs> right now yeah. and grandparents place too right so it's uh it's we got to get double double work going on in there a couple of generations what does it mean to you as a dad and like being on the farm and having two little kids like you said and being able to show the the hard work of it is being out of the farm but like kind of showing the traditions that it is too that you definitely got when you were a kid as well oh it's huge it just um you know they get off the bus and then they i'm in the shop and then you just come and you work on something with them and they love it we got our old mini bike fired up which uh was again through a couple generations i think the old princess auto mini bike and um third fourth pull i don't think it started in 25 years since i probably rode it last and uh yeah, about the fourth pull, it fired right back up and no brakes on it, but the kid got the kids on the front there and uh, kind of went around the yard a little bit and then that's all they want to do now. So it's uh, it's awesome. And just having the room to run and, and play and uh, we've been setting up obstacle courses and that's, that's just so huge for kids at that age. And yeah, very thankful that we have that in the family. Was that always kind of, kind of your game plan? Like you always wanted to get back out to the farm. Yeah. Obviously, it's a huge part of your life, right? To yeah. be able to continue to bring in generations after that as well. Yeah. That's got to be special. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've always loved it out there. The whole time I've been doing music, I've been out there working and stuff too. And, and uh, I've always enjoyed it and now feel even just more inspired to write about that stuff and sing about the the place we call home and and uh, just all the fun we have out there so yeah i think it's it's gonna be great for everybody family loves it and i couldn't be happier you're living the fundamentals of a country artist you know that right like <laughs> yeah. you're getting dirt on your hands you're yeah. raising a family and you're probably letting your wife do a lot of stuff and then you're naming the dogs like that's exactly <laughs> what's going on in your life right now yeah. but uh for our kissing listeners it's it's awesome to get you back here and, and something yeah. you might not know is you were the first person to be unbelievably nice to me at the first ACMAs Is in Red right? Deer. You were right. unbelievably gracious. <laughs> and I can never thank you enough for that. But uh, coming up and, and doing what you did in such a small town, can you kind of start us at the beginning of, of some of the hardships, obviously? That I would imagine there was a lot of naysayers in your life saying, yeah, maybe stick to the farm, maybe do this. And you're <laughs> saying, no, 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 I got something special here. I want to do it. Yeah, maybe a little, it was a really slow start for me. So I don't think I got, it wasn't just all of a sudden I was a bedroom closet singer. And then all of a sudden I'm going to Nashville. It was kind of a lot of, uh, you know, campfires and, and kind of getting into that and the kitchen parties when we were young, high school, even through college, never thought this was going to be any kind of career. Always loved music, always played but just kind of for fun, never plugged a guitar in or sang on a microphone or anything. But um, there was a lot of encouragement too, um, when I, especially when I started writing songs. Uh, I remember listening to Eric Church's first album. That was a huge one for me. Um, just kind of really wanted to write that kind of thing. I just believed every one of the songs on that album, the Sinners Like Me album. And so really started diving into songwriting. And one day we were sitting there, we had an old road atlas, uh, the friend's place I was living with, and, and opened it up and just flipping through and came across uh, Tennessee. And I thought, oh, it'd be really cool to go down to Nashville and just throw myself in with all that. And kind of got that idea in my head. And three months later, uh, quit my other job, oil patch job, was working at the time too. And um, yeah, packed up the truck, went down there. And I looked up the Music City Hostel. I'd stayed in some hostels and gone to Australia. We did a backpacking thing before, so it was pretty comfortable with that. So I looked that up, 
and go there and uh, they take me to my room and there's one piece of art on the wall and it's the uh, a blown up version of the Sinners Like Me album is like on the wall in the room they put me in, which was like one of those just meant to be here kind of moments. So yeah, I was very quickly humbled in that town. I think there's uh, 10,000 other kids that came from small towns that thought they were pretty good and uh, you know, all, all honing their craft there. But um, yeah, just kind of made some really good friends that first trip and just loved the town itself and the creative spirit of it. So. Uh, came back in the spring and came back for seating and then uh, was was back down there the next year kind of working on my first album uh, through some grants and funding and stuff too. Um, yeah, just how it all kind of came together. It was never anything I dreamed of as a eight, nine year old just needing to do it, but um, how it all came together. Just loved music so much and still love it to this day and, and just, yeah, feel fortunate to have the career I've had and, and to continue doing it. Do you remember some of those first songs that you were trying to spit out before you went to Nashville that said like, you know what, cross the border, maybe, possibly. I'm not going to ask you to play it or anything, but do you remember <laughs> those jams? Don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, uh, they, they were, there was an album I did actually with my sister worked at a big music fan too, but not a, not a musician, but uh, she got a job at a, uh, actually kind of went to school at a recording studio in Calgary and her final project um, was to record a little something so like yeah these are like very first early songs that I went in and did but one of those songs ended up getting us the grant that kind of allowed us to do a full-length album all produced and everything which really kind of kicked off the whole career so yeah there was a few of those but that CD I think it had six songs on it just me and the guitar I had like uh, I think 40 of them in my uh, truck when I was going down and they stripped my truck apart and found these CDs and <laughs> grilled me on it. And I was just kind of saying like, oh, we're just, you know, we, uh, we trade them, you know, us musicians. I wasn't looking to play or sell or anything, but you still, you know, it was, it was a little touchy, but they had the old lamp hanging over us and grilling me, but um, talked my way through it and they let me through it. So you're not red flagged every time you go to <laughs> the border? Probably You're yeah. the guy with the CDs <laughs> every single time. I haven't got turned around yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I was sweating that, that trip for sure. <laughs> And then you kind of come through a lot of waves, right? You play a lot of shows. We see a big valley. You yeah. win a lot of the Alberta Country Music Awards, too. And, yeah. and then you land with Bobby Wills, who yeah. we're a big fan of. We've had the Prairie States come through, yeah. too. And, Great guys. And, uh, and, and here you are. Do you find yourself just hitting, like, another level of where your career, thanks to what Bobby Wills is helping you do? But I yeah. think that you've already had that within you, too, is just yeah. kind of elevating into Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's a business of connections and everything, too. And he obviously had a, a great career himself. And um, yeah, just just uh, loves loved what we were doing. I think we always kind of leaned into that more traditional honky tonk kind of thing. And and he did a little bit, too. And, and so working together with him was the obvious next step. When we started chatting, he said, like, I want you to make a full out honky tonk record. And we said, yeah, let's lean right into it. So he hooked me up with uh, a lot of his friends in, in Nashville too, and, and just the production went to another level. And um, yeah, just kind of hanging out with him at the CCMAs here recently too, and just kind of getting into some of the parties with them. And yeah, obviously the Prairie States love those guys up here as well. So um, yeah, it's just cool to be uh, a part of this kind of rising ship kind of thing. When you see that and you see the level that you're getting to, what other goals are you kind of putting on the, maybe not on a piece of paper, but keeping in the back of your mind some places that you really want to be in the next year, in the next five years? Yeah. Do you have those ideas as well? Yeah, I think uh, like having my own tour bus is the ultimate. That's Then you With know you've got, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. that. Uh, yeah, get, uh, that and then you then you're really cruising around I, i'd love to get on a like a, a tour a little more we've we've done some smaller ones you know more local ones and the prairies but like yeah to get on kind of like a full out tour i think would always be cool but that's the thing for me i think at this point not looking to be a worldwide superstar just with the family and the farm that i love to do that too but just uh yeah keep really growing it in canada here we got to get out to cavendish beach music festival and pei this year which was huge i just love music so much out there so just fun touring around that part of the the country and um yeah ontario's uh obviously a, a big nut to crack but um been out there doing some radio and stuff too and, and really pushing out there so yeah just more and more we can get uh out across the country it's great and i just see a lot of this honky tonk stuff really kind of taking off with like jade eagleson's doing it now up here but the john parties and midland and stuff like that so it's uh it's awesome to see it kind of coming back on the airwaves and uh, we want to ride that wave too 
that's something that I do love about you is that your songs go perfect with beer drinking. It's great. <laughs> Every single time. So we, we made a living on that, man. <laughs> keep keep the people uh, with a drink in their hand for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's a perfect segue into this brand new song with Neon Time. Yeah. And it's exactly what it is, right? Is yeah. uh, you hanging out in a bar, enjoying yourself putting a quarter in the jukebox. I That's love right. that line because you don't, don't see those enough anywhere. <laughs> I don't think but, you can get uh, a song for a quarter anymore anywhere, <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. or yeah. a jukebox. 55 cents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You are going to play it for us really quick, but yeah. really quick before, uh, just take us through kind of what the circles of the songwriting was for yourself and, and where the ideas were coming through too. Yeah, that was um, a song I wrote with Jim Collins and Wade Kirby, and um, those guys are monster songwriters. We wrote at Jim's house, which is a very big house. He's... Uh, written uh the the good stuff kenny chesney and uh big green tractor and uh she thinks my tractor's sexy another one good cup good tractor song yeah, he's got so a few. He fit, yeah. yeah fit right in with us and actually i'd gotten there not early but uh wade was was behind uh he was stuck in traffic and so jim and i were throwing some songwriting ideas around and had kind of landed on a couple we liked and, and started a few things. And then Wade shows up and he comes right in. He's like, you want to do a honky tonk? You're looking for honky tonk music. I just had this idea. And tr he said, sitting in traffic, he said, that's just me on neon time. And we, Jim and I threw out every other idea that we'd thrown around. Uh, that was that was perfect. And those guys are just so good with melodies and, and just really not, not letting, not just kind of getting to the next part. They're waiting until they get that perfectly kind of rounded melody a sing-alongable thing and um yeah it was so much fun writing with those guys and still to this day after 10 12 years of songwriting just still learn so much when you get in a room with uh, with guys like that so it was it was awesome writing with them and yeah excited to have this one out as the first one on this project well i'm excited for our kiss and listeners to listen to this too and um really quick standard alberta is yeah. where you're from born yeah. and raised right do you have a sign like home of Drew Gregory coming into it? <laughs> I haven't got, they have such a good one right now because it's in Wheatland County, which is a great name for a county. Yeah. And then we're right, standards right in the middle of it. And it's uh, the heart of Wheatland County, which I've always thought was great. And, and uh, yeah, the home yeah, of Drew maybe Gregory. Maybe a little sub thing underneath <laughs> uh, someday would okay. be great. But yeah, you can say we'll no to this. It. You can say no to this. When you're playing your jam, I'm going to make you a sign. Okay. <laughs> and then you can judge on whether yay or nay that, that standard should actually be putting it up there. Either way, we're going to look okay. into it. But while you play it, I'm going to draw and All right. we'll, 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 uh, we'll figure it out after that. that. Right. Does that sound cool? I know the people to talk to, so <laughs> we'll see what we made happen. All right, man. Let's play this tune live.